we should well, well let us not worry about the right after uh, uh, alexander that is uh 250 uh it's about 400 bc no uh, yeah 300 bc well that is the latest book the book that my good buddy ahmad sadra is working on yay in and now now that you are on your summer vacation but let me say welcome beloved sibling and uh, so we are sciencing the day once again i am aaron freeman your sciencey optimist here with my ace droogie a very very sciencey sociologist because he's a sociologist professor Ahmad Sadri, Professor of International Islamic Studies at Lake Forest College. I mean, that just sounds so good. It just sounds so wonderful. But, so Ahmad is a, I guess we're going to call this, a, we can call this what, yet another section of, of, of uh, Aaron is wrong. <laughs> so we were having a discussion yesterday because I consider myself a liberal fundamentalist, which is to say that I believe that the things that I, that, that, that my version of, of uh, 18th century and the Enlightenment is the right version. And anybody else who believes differently is wrong. And you say that doesn't make me a fundamentalist. Fair no, right? no, I, 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 I don't think we, sh we should use the word liberal fundamentalist or fundamentalist liberal, because it's like saying, uh, you know, salty sugar. But of course, fundamentalism and liberalism, they are polar opposites. Indeed, fundamentalism came to oppose everything that liberals stood for. And if liberals stood for anything, it was modernity, secularism, separation of church and state, but human rights. Individual no, no. rights. Uh, Mehran mentioned jumbo. Can you see that Mehran mentioned a jumbo shrimp as an oxymoron as well? No, it is much worse than jumbo shrimp. <laughs> okay, but so the, first of all, first of all, do you does it make sense to you why I'm saying this? Why this? Why, why I'm why I'm defending this position for the sake of this? I why you're saying it, but I disagree well, that. I that that it that it should be used because actually if fundamentalism is anything it is a visceral and organized revolt against anything modern and being liberal in your attitude in your political views in your in your uh, approach to the world is a very modern way of being and fundamentalism has come for nothing else except to oppose that, to oppose well, modernity in all okay. of its manifestations, especially in religion. Modern yeah. fundamentalism is a religious revivalist revolt against accommodation of religion to the modern world. Well, of course, and of course you're right. Obviously, that is right. Obviously, in its classic sense, fundamentalism is a, a, a religious phenomenon. But if, for, for example, if we uh, define religion as a non-rational way of dealing with the unknown, for the sake of that discussion, okay? So I fundamentally, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I think another characteristic of fundamentalism is intolerance. And I am fundamentally, unfortunately, to my shame and discredit, intolerant of much of the political world as it has evolved to this point. For example, as you know, that, you know I've, uh, since 2016, I have not listened to a single complete sentence uttered by the 45th president. I just sit there with my hand over the mute button and mute it off. So that I am, and, and that you could argue that, it, that uh, Antifa is intolerant. They are fundamentalists, they're fundamentally intolerant of ideas that they interpret as fascist. Now I'm calling even even though yeah, and so I'm calling that a kind of liberal fundamentalism. I'm saying that I am, uh, yeah, that, 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 that the modern world. I reject the modern world. I reject the world of Breitbart and uh, um, uh, not Fox, but uh, Alex Jones. I reject that world, and that is the modern world that I'm rejecting. And to that extent, I'm calling myself. What do you think? Well, I I think there are a plethora of words that we can use. So you can reject somebody's idea, you can be opposed to their ideas, 
You can even be intolerant of those ideas. You may have no time for those ideas. But for all of these, they are very good words. You could be a dogmatic liberal. You could be a, um, a committed liberal. Uh, <clears throat> and you could, you, you could invest a lot of your em emotions in this opposition to things that are anti-modernist. Indeed, I am as well. I am a modernist, right? I, I believe in modernity, and, I, and I'm uh, against people who attack it. By the way, your opposition to the right-wing politics, indeed, it is modernist, because what fundamentalism and Breitbart and, uh, and, and fasc fascists and Nazis of the 20th century have in common is their opposition to modernity. It's of their opposition to individualism, to liberalism, to democracy. This is what they all have in common. And indeed, there has been a, an established link between fascism and religious fundamentalism, religious extremism. And we can, see that, we can see that connection right here in the United States where 91% of the people voted for Donald Trump. So indeed, what... what the 91% of people voted for Donald Trump? 91% of the fundamentalists voted oh, for Donald Trump. Well, it, 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 so that connection, that connection is indeed a exists. A, that is this this variety of religious fundamentalism, religious extremism is connected to the, uh, the political rejection of modernity, political rejection of of secularism, which is called fascism and Nazism. And I think the best word for all of them is nativism. So nativism. Uh, is it, a political a form of political fundamentalism, but sorry. there cannot be a, a political. There cannot be a a liberal fundamentalism. You can you you cannot be a fundamentalist and a liberal because liberal fundamentalism has come to oppose liberalism. But let me just you say that be a buddy, liberal, but you cannot be a fundamentalist liberal. So our buddy Nick Gross points out that uh, even the fun, I think he's pointing out that even the fundamentalists oppose some aspects of modern science like evolution while embracing other aspects like vaccines. I think that's what uh, Nick is going on, going on. And so there's no well, fundamentalism, as you're describing it, does not necessarily preclude the acceptance of certain aspects of modernity. Yes, no, well, the, the, this is the thing. All fundamentalists, you know, take rides in airplanes, right? They use cell phones. They are not... And in fact, in fact, I was just saying... They are not necessarily Luddites. What they oppose is the authority of science to decide things that would encroach, in their view, uh, in their, in, in, in their, in their um, verities, in their certainties, in the question of Bible. The rise of fundamentalism really is an intra-religious phenomenon. It came not necessarily to oppose modernity and science, it came to oppose modernity and science in religion. The rise of fundamentalism in the United States is, occurs when a bunch of Presbyterian theologians are influenced by the German higher criticism that applies the science of philology and the science of anthropology, archaeology, uh, to the Bible and come up with very scientific statements that Solomon didn't write the Song of Solomon, Moses didn't write the Pentateuch, you know, David didn't write uh, uh, the Psalms, uh, and these uh, uh, books of the Bible, uh, you know, the five books of Moses were not plopped down on his head in, on Mount Sinai, they, they were written over a long time, and and I'm making, well, let me get, okay, so I, I, again, no debate, you, you, as you were describing fundamentalism in its classical form, but let me ask you, so you, you, you would call, you would say that I am more properly described in, in my, as I'm defining my views as a liberal, a, a dogmatic liberal. So can you tell me, would you agree that dogmatic liberalism and fundamentalism have some intersections? Well, I mean, again, e even dogmatic liberal, if you are really a liberal, you cannot be dogmatic. But of course, we have some people who are kind of very emotionally liberal, 
because when you're a liberal, you are not a literalist. You are not, you don't believe that God gave uh, these, these beliefs to you. You know that these beliefs came to you because you were persuaded by them that were pronounced, they were pronounced by people who are not infallible, right? And so I can live with the idea of dogmatic liberal, but I can't live with the idea of fundamentalist liberal because fundamentalism has come to reject liberalism in its entirety, because it has come to reject modernity in its entirety. First and foremost, it has come to reject the authority of science to decide the questions that uh, relate to their religion. Adam and Eve, Noah's uh, flood, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, mythologies and, and foundation myths of religion, they believe these are literally true, and the, the Bible, the Holy Writ is inerrant, and, and science does not have the authority to, to use its tools, for instance, the philology, to decide how the Bible was written. They have but to let me say, for example, for about the rest. But let me say, for example, uh, uh, Charles Murray, or, or even, well, let's just say Charles Murray, who's a respected psychologist, sociologist, he made, his explorations brought him to conclusions about IQ and intelligence among African Americans that were simply unacceptable. And I don't care what your science is, I find that at science, I reject that science. And many of on my side of the political spectrum uh, reject that science. And isn't that the same as the rejection? Because in, in, if uh, there were, there are uh, um, creation scientists who look at the same data that you and I do. And their science. I think, the same. I think that that is that is the same. Creation science is again the same oxymoron. You yeah. cannot be a creation scientist. And uh, regarding Murray's research on IQ and things like that, you know, you can have people who are viscerally rejecting it. And if you viscerally reject it and and decide no matter what it says, it is wrong then your rejection becomes very close to a religious rejection of... Well, that, that, that's my point exactly. That's my point exactly. And of course, again, you are a thousand percent right about the... As you define fundamentalism, that is absolutely, obviously, that you're correct. But there seems to me that in within the modern political discourse, there are attitudes that are very similar to those of fundamentalist religious beliefs, that <laughs> to the extent that they are attitudes that they are liberal, they are designed to create a more inclusive, broader world, but they brook no challenge. That you may not, in, uh, my guess is that for, I can tell you that for my, my, some in my community who believe that they are victims of microaggression, you cannot argue, you are not allowed to hold the view that microaggressions are not necessarily a thing. Right. And I would say that's in the same neighborhood. It is in the same neighborhood. That is, if you have people who espouse unfalsifiable beliefs, Right. Belief that cannot be challenged given the evidence. This is a kind of a religious attitude. Whereas a scientific attitude in, in its nature uh, carries the seeds of the possibility of being right. proven wrong. Well, the falsifiability is what, but I, my, my, our buddy Nick just said, no, there are not. I'm not sure, Nick, what you meant. No, there are not what? But I'm sure he'll tell us that. Uh, oh, opposition modern, so, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, so and that, and, and really, we talked about before that, uh, uh, what's your face? Um, Karen Armstrong wrote her book on the struggle for God. And she talked about that there are, in every generation, there are fundamentalists, people who believe that what they believe is what the way it was meant to be originally back in the Bronze Age. And in every generation, that's different. <laughs> in every generation, claims it has its fundamentalist, and they define that fundamentalism different. And, and as, a, as a sociologist, I assume that is your observation as well. Oh, he oh, he's a Christian scientist are not scientists. But let me, well, so, Nick, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, I, so it is not clear what Nick meant. I, I agree with it's clear, He was saying that creation scientists are not scientists. Yeah, he agrees with me. Saying that there is no, that you, just like you were saying that, uh, you know, you can't be a liberal yeah, fundamentalist. So basically what, what, I was trying to convey is that fundamentalism exists in all religions. 
Of course, when we say fundamentalism, historically, the word comes from the American Presbyterian context. It started in the Presbyterian Church. It, it spread all the way to Catholic Church, to, to Lutheran Church. And, I mean, the, the debate between fundamentalists and modernists exists in all Christian denominations, but also it, it exists in, in Judaism, it exists in Islam, it exists in Hinduism, it exists in Buddhism. In all of these, Fundamentalism is a revolt against modernity, a revolt against separation of church and state, against science, against individualism, against uh, the authority of science to, to decide questions of faith. And, and this, this is the, the meaning of the term. Well, he, of course, you're right. There's no debate about that. But let me say that fundamentalism, as i just listening to you right now, it also seems to me to be connected with old age. People who say, back in my day. I mean, for example, right now, we our, our mutual friend, uh, Lise Elliott, talks about gender being on a spectrum, uh, you know, and that you know we, we all rest somewhere on the spectrum. But I certainly understand people who say, there's men and there's women. There's boys and there's girls. And, and that's because we were old. <laughs> and that's what we're used to. But I, I, would, I would add a wrinkle here. So, fundamentalism is not traditionalism. Fundamentalism is basically a modern phenomenon because it is a, re a, a rejection of modernity. There, there were no fundamentalists in the good old days. The, the good old days was the days of traditionalism. Yes, but no, but it's it about reinvention, reconstruction of a version of the past that never existed. You, you were in a good position to answer the next question. Was Socrates a victim of fundamentalism? No, no, I disagree. No, there were, there were no fundamentalists in, in, ancient, in ancient Athens. Uh, so, yeah, again, I, you know, we, we can, I'm prepared to talk about that. But fundamentalism is basically an, a 19, 18th, 18th century, 19th century phenomenon. And it has it exists because people were scared by modernity. And basically, to make a long story short, fundamentalism is a delusion. It is the delusion that we can go back and live the life of people who lived a thousand or two thousand years ago only if we stick to the literal meaning of some holy writ. It is a form of mental illness, it is a form of collective hysteria. It is impossible, insofar as social sciences are concerned, insofar as the science of hermeneutics is concerned, to go back to channel people who lived 2,000 years ago and think like them. It is literally impossible to do that. And the belief that fundamentalists are doing this, this is a delusion. This cannot exist. It cannot happen. And by the way, it doesn't happen. Fundamentalists do, uh, who believe in biblical inerrancy and literalism, they do not stick to every single precept in the Bible. They do their own cherry picking. Well, of course. But let me, like, for example, so I, I'm reminded as you speak of our beloved brothers and sisters, the Amish, who they don't, again, to your point, obviously, they, they do not wholly reject modernism, but they do recreate the life of a century ago. They drive in the buggies at all and they're dressed in, and is that, would you consider that? Also for, for, for Orthodox Jews or Hasidic yeah. Jews who, who they, 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 yes. the top of 17th century Polish, uh, you know, uh, gentry thinking that apparently, you know, they are uh, reproducing the life of ancient Jews. But okay, so, so is, that a, is that a mental a delusion? Is that a form of illness? So I, I would say these are the orthodox version of these religions, right? Uh, it is not really necessarily the same thing as fundamentalism. Fundamentalism is has come to oppose modernity. It has come to, to, to stick to the literalism of the biblical tradition. But if you think in terms of, let's say, Hasidic Jews, right? What they do, they, they apply a very mystical understanding to the Bible. They are not literalists, right? And the medieval philosophers of religion, doctors of the church, when they apply, when, when they read the Bible, they weren't after literally 
claiming everything is, is factually true. This claim that everything in the Bible is factually true is itself very much, very much affected by modern science that privileges facts, right? In this no, sense, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean by that? That view. Let's say we look at the story of 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 Noah's Ark, right? What is the most important thing in the story of Noah's Ark? For the modern fundamentalists, they want to prove that there was actually a flood and there was an ark and there were animals that put in this and everything that is in the Bible is factual. Why are they claiming it is factual? Because they have accepted this idea from modern science that facts are important. When you look at the traditional way of, of, of Christian divines and Christian interpreters of the Bible, when they looked at the Bible, they were not so concerned to prove everything was factual. They were much more mystical. They were much more interpretive in their approach. So fundamentalism is basically a result of, of a visceral reaction, a fear uh, reaction to modernity and running back to some kind of imagined past that they constructed on the spot. But let me say, you know, now you may make an extremely good point, and this is the point, again, that Karen Armstrong makes, which is that, and it's absolutely true of my dogmatic liberalism, which is, she says that all fundamentalism is rooted in a fear of extinction. And that is absolutely my concern. You know, I, I, I reject the Breitbart, Alex Jones gang, because I fear that their philosophies and that their impact will destroy the, for lack of, the, 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 the liberal democracy that I think I'm living in. Yes, I agree with you. I, I share that sentiment. But neither you nor I believe that these beliefs are, are, are correct because they are written somewhere and, and dictated by God. We believe that we can f win a, a war of, of rational argumentation against fascists, against Marxists, against theocrats, right? And, and, and yes, if fascism takes over, mo modernity is over because fascism and communism, there were two European, uh, basically, there were tripl triplets. You have the European modernity, liberalism, liberal democracies, and these two evil twins, fascism and Marxism, that rejected it. So, yes, I am against those anti-liberal views, and I reject them, and I can probably get very emotional about it, right, as well, but I'm not a fundamentalist about it. I don't reject them because I... Um, because I want to create a kind of imaginary friend for myself and kind of imaginary house and go live in there. I believe that I can oppose them rationally in the marketplace place of ideas and I can win votes based on my argumentation. And but so you, it's not you, fundamentalism. Well, you, just, you said something that reminded me of something else that you said. And, and I, I want to, uh, we have like six or seven minutes left, but I want to, so you're absolutely arguing fundamentalism in its religious context, which is, of course, what it is. But now I want to bring in another idea that you have, we've talked about, about this notion of a noble lie, of religion as a noble lie. There is reason to believe that, for example, religions are immensely useful in creating communities. Fair? And so that, and, or as some other folks would say, creating pro-social behavior that religions are useful in creating pro-social behavior. And fundamental, I mean, and that fundamentalism, the kind of belief that here, right, on this book we stand, can that not be a useful rock upon which to build a pro-social community? Yes and no, because Religion can create a lot of solidarity in society, right? You can yeah. feel a lot of brotherly love with your, um, you know, co-religionists as you're dancing around the fire or you're worshiping the same God and singing yeah. hymns. That will generate a lot of feelings of togetherness. The problem with this is that religions actually also generate hostility to the other. So actually, by 
uh, creating friendship within the group, the other side of that coin is that people who don't belong to this group, they are not going to heaven, they are damned, they are evil, and ultimately pseudo speciation. They are not even human. They're, they're, they're illegals. <laughs> yes, yes, they are not part of us. So they, their, their life is forfeit. If you kill them, it is not murder, it is bloodshed, right? right? You don't even call it murder. Or purification. Yes. So the thing is that when religion with modernity, and this is very important, one of the main debates between fundamentalists and modernists in Christianity, modern, modern uh, America, 19th century, 20th century America, was that modernists decided to go for pluralism. That is, let us not try to convert people to our own faith. Actually, when you send out missions, these missions should engage in doing good work, right? Rather than trying to convert people to Christianity before Jesus comes and they all burn to hell, uh, we, should, we should be tolerant, tolerance, pluralism. And this is what, what fundamentalists rejected. Well, when I'll... the debate was happening, you know, Pearl Bach, or, you know, the, the great Pearl, writer. Pearl, Pearl S. Buck, yeah. the author. Right. Her parents were missionaries in, in China. And when this whole debate was, was kind of raging, she was very much in favor of the pluralistic approach, revising the, the mission of the missions from forcibly or from, uh, you know, by hook or crook, converting people to Christianity to doing the right words to, to spreading the gospel by your deeds, by creating comfort for the people. So basically, this is what fundamentalists rejected. Fundamentalists are against pluralism. So yeah. the modernist religion, actually, that what you said applies to modernist religion. If it is an noble lie, it's a kind of lie, lie that is good for humanity. But the fundamentalist religion generates solidarity within the group by cheating, by creating hostility toward other groups. Well, I will tell you this, my dear brother. I fundamentally believe in the wisdom of my good pal, Ahmad Sadri, professor of international Islamic studies at Lake Forest College. Thank you so much for talking, my brother. I hope we can do this again, like maybe next week. But it's really fun talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And thank all the folks who are watching. Thank you for watching live. Thank you for watching on the replay. And we look forward to seeing you guys again. And I hope you have a fabulous time as you all continue to science the day. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Ahmad.